now broadcasting the Dr. Nilda Business Foresight Show, positioning your business with strategies for an extraordinary future. Dr. Nilda features expert guests from diverse backgrounds to bring you their stories and strategies that have helped them reach their success. The diversity in industries gives you that panoramic view from an array of industries. They are innovators, thought leaders, trendsetters, and strategists. Here, Dr. Nilda reveals strategies that will position you to be on the cutting edge and be able to do what you love with the people you like, making the profits you want to live the lifestyle that you have dreamed of. And now, here's your host, Dr. Nilda Perez. Hello, and welcome back to the Foresight Strategy Show with your host, Dr. Nilda Perez, and co-host, Rachel Calderon. Today, we are interviewing Dr. Vern Wheelwright. Dr. Vern Wheelwright is an internationally recognized professional in the field of foresight and future studies. He is the author of the award-winning book, Your Future, Make It a Good One, and also the Personal Futures Workbook. He has published articles in a number of professional journals and other publications. Dr. Wheelwright has conducted workshops and he has addressed audiences in major cities in the U.S. and audiences internationally in areas such as Turkey, Denmark, India, Australia, Japan, Canada, and many, many more. Welcome with me, Dr. Vern Wheelwright. Dr. Vern, my first question to you is how do you... Um, how did you even get involved in personal futures? Let's take a step back. Explain, because we, a lot of the audience, we've been f- familiarized and they've discovered that futures is definitely something that they're interested in. So they know what foresight and futures and futurists are. Now, my question to you is, you're very, you have a, a niche and the niche is personal futures. Can you explain what that is and how you got involved in it? Well, I got started while I was still in school at the University of Houston. This has been almost 20 years ago. And I'd learned all these wonderful methods. Uh, I was absolutely sold. I'd been in small business of my own for quite a few years before that. Okay. And I loved the methods. I was really sold. But in my final semester, Dr. Bishop gave us an assignment. And he said, I want each of you to create a 10-year plan for yourselves. I knew that was going to be a piece of cake. I'd been studying these methods for two years. Absolutely. It was not easy. It really was not easy. <laughs> and, and I didn't understand why, but I, I created a plan. I got a good grade on it and I still use the plan. Right. But I went on and uh, started research at Leeds Metropolitan University uh, in the UK. And I did five years of research and finally finished up with a a dissertation on personal futures. That dissertation included a small workbook in the uh, the appendix. I took that appendix. I did a couple of workshops at uh, World Future Society meetings and then published the workbook on my website as a free download. And then I wrote a book. Okay, fantastic. So can you give me a little bit more information about what exactly Personal Futures is um, and how is it effective in in one's life? Mm -hmm. Well, it does the same thing for people that Future Studies does for corporations. The difference is that I found that the, the steep forces that we use in business right. don't work for individuals. To an individual worrying about the future of ecology or the economy or the technology is peripheral. What's important are the forces within that individual's life, their health, right. their friends and family, uh, their finances, uh, all of those things that are personal to them. And you right. build a plan based on those forces now, sure, you're still aware of steep, but it's, it's not the driving forces in your life. Your family, your finances, your health, those are the driving forces in your life. 
Okay. So now, would you? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, we're jumping. Was, we are jumping all over each other. You, can you tell we're excited? Okay. I, no, just, I, I like this topic. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to let you go, Rachel, but because I, I have a really good question. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, my what I find interesting is that I think this would be is is definitely beneficial because you see, like you're saying that the driving forces from within or 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 us as personally, it does affect us in our business and our planning what we're what we are to do even as far as tomorrow or next week, you know. Um, be, and and we can attest to this as our mother had gotten sick, right, and everything just kind of stopped. Literally went, it went into a halt. So mm -hmm. it's like, but we didn't plan that. So I think it, it would, it's great that it's something that we can also plan for the future of how do we kind of, because now I'm thinking, you know, if this were to happen again or something like this, right. you know, what can, how, how can we do something that will prevent us from coming, our, you know, from our business coming to a complete halt? Okay, I'm going to back up a, a step in addition to the forces there are the stages of life. Now, in all the futures, there's nothing you can really know about, about what's going to happen in the future, mm -hmm. except in personal futures, the stages of life. I didn't invent these. The Greeks uh, have written about them centuries ago. They had seven stages of life. And it's just like, uh, like almost anything in biology. It goes through stages to right. the butterfly starts out as... Uh, uh, as, as a caterpillar and becomes eventually a butterfly. And a person starts out as a baby and becomes a teenager, an adult, uh, a middle-aged person, and finally an older person. And those stages, understanding those stages for yourself and your family members helps you plan ahead for you and for them. You know, you can see I'm at a stage of life when I'm I'm starting to plan the, 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 the inevitable. So I have to think differently about life than I did when I was in my 20s. Did okay. I answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay. And, and okay, now you, Nilda. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I, yeah, I am jumping all over this. I'm sorry, but I, okay, so here is the thing. I can see, I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay. I can see where steep also works in your personal life because you in your personal life, there, there are impacts that are external that we have no control over. Uh, Rachel mentioned something that was, it's super poignant, which was when my mom got sick. Those were, there were external, even though that was a family, but there were external things that we had no control over. For instance, we took her to the hospital twice and they wouldn't admit her. And my mother's health was declining fast and furious. So we go back to, I go back to the steep. Social is something that even in our personal life, any, any social environment affects us. Technology, technology, if, you, if you're not up with technology nowadays, you, you can't even bank. Is, mm -hmm. you know, so that's a, uh, when we talk about the economy, the economy is external, but it definitely affects the personal. Mm -hmm. The environment also affects the, the, the personal. So one of the things uh, that I wrote in, in my magazine last month was about, we have a CP, they had a new CPV uh, plant put on, uh, put a few miles away, maybe like 50, 10, 15 miles away from our home. Well, Sorry to be exact. Oh, I thought it was a little further than that. Mm -hmm. So the reality is that that affects the entire county and the surrounding counties. So that's external, but that affects our personal health and yes. our personal drinking water. And then, of course, the political, we all know. So, so why do you feel that that's not like a part of this where I can so see the connection? Well, I, I have no disagreement with what you've just said at all. You're right. But what my point is, is that for individuals, we have to think on a personal level. We think of health as our health. We don't think so much about uh, curing polio in South Africa. Uh, it, large organizations are working with a much bigger canvas 
we have to we have to narrow our perspective and understand our lives as well as what's going on in the world around us. I, I, I read Wall Street Journal every day because I, I like to keep up on what's happening in the news. It's a little confusing sometimes. But yeah. <laughs> at the same time, what's, help, what's happening in the health world out there is not helping me with my health problems here in my family. These are the ones I have to deal with. I can't, I, in personal futures, I'm saying focus on your life and on your world and then learn about the rest of the world and steep, but still you've got to take care of yourself. Same thing applies in small business. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I wrote a, a workbook for small business and it, it, right. it's the same thing. It brings it down to a small business owner and tells him or her to focus on getting your business started, keeping it running, keeping the, flash, the cash flow going, uh, doing the marketing, all the things that have to be done in a small business. If you spend your time worrying about what's happening on the other side of the world, you won't be able to keep your business going unless you're doing business on the far side of the world. Right. Okay. Okay. And, and I think, I think that that's a fair, that's fair to say, because you know what, before you begin to think out, out from, of your, you know, of your box, you could say, um, it's kind of good to see internally. And of course, even as a, you know, two man, two man, uh, operation operation even we have to take care of our health you know so i mean because we can be running right. and working like hours and hours without even a without skipping a beat and then sometimes we're like oh my gosh it then hits us and i'm like we can't operate like this i remember the first couple of days we were like that and uh, the first couple of years and i said no we yeah. can't do this i said we need our rest because right. we went we then want to be able to you know put out our best. We right. want to put out excellence. So if that's what we want to put out, we have to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. number one. Exactly. We need to sleep. <laughs> Cannot fall asleep in a, tra on a, tra in a training, right? So <laughs> no. can't train and sleep. So, but yeah, that, that's true. So, um, so is that more or less what we're talking about, Dr. Byrne? Is that pretty much what you try to explain when you're talking about personal futures? Yes. Yes, I just go into a whole lot more detail and all of the same things that you go through when you're doing futures for a corporation, we go through, but on a different scale on a personal basis. And that's really about it. That's, right. that's what this right. book is about. <laughs> it, it, yeah. All of those same steps except on a personal basis and uh, realized when I, when I started on this, that I wanted, I wanted the information about personal futures to go to everybody. And so I put it on my website. Now I realize that there are parts, people who don't have a, access to a website, but by putting the personal futures workbook on the website along with some basic information about foresight and future studies right i've had well over a hundred thousand downloads of the workbooks and that was a couple of years ago i my website is kind of in disrepair right now i'm starting to update it but my statistics are out of date but two years ago we were, we'd passed a hundred thousand downloads Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, right. And the, 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 although that's awesome, it would be great if people would actually use it because I find, uh, I got introduced to, to futures about 10 years ago and I have found it to be the most fascinating thing and not just because, cause I def I'm definitely passionate about it, but, um, uh, it was really kind of haphazard the way that I got involved in futures. I went, I thought I was interviewing for an MBA program and little did I know that Dr. Bruce thought that this was the perfect program for me. 
and and basically kind of steered me that way. And I said, oh yeah, that that's new. That's I love anything that's new. I love new technology. I love anything that's new. So I said, oh yeah, that that's good. And I was in the 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 brunt of it and didn't realize. I was like, oh my goodness, this is a monster. <laughs> but the truth be told, it has been to me life changing. And it's that way in whether it's personal futures or business futures or any industry that you're in, understanding the future, having an idea, having a compass is very important. People do this all of the time when they plan for their weddings, when they plan for, you know, to have children, children's birthdays. We're always planning for the future, but a lot of times we're navigating this with very little to no information. Would you agree? Yes. Uh and I'm going to go back into what you said for a small coincidence. I was in the University of Houston MBA program in my first semester, and I took a course in world futures and changed my major. <laughs> hooked, hooked, isn't it? I'm telling you, it is like a drug. I know. <laughs> it's like, I, I have not met one person that has gotten involved in futures that doesn't feel the same identical way. Because it really is fascinating to be able to, uh, to process and to be able to research and learn things that really take, it just gives you such a different perspective. I really believe that futurists never see the world the same way ever again. Would you agree? I think that's true. Right. Yeah, we, we take off those rose colored glasses and we see that reality and all of the possibilities. And that, that's the fast, fascinating, the possibilities, the opportunities, the threats. And uh, so in, in personal futures, how do people seize opportunities or avoid threats? In the same way that an organization does, you just, you, you look at your life, and you start thinking about, okay, what are the things that can happen? I've got children, they, children break things, <laughs> themselves yeah. included. Right. And so right. you have to anticipate, okay, if, if something happens to my child, what do I do? How do I deal with this? Uh, if I have children, how am I gonna help them with their education? Am I going to send them to college? Am I going to send them to a technical education to learn to work with their hands? Am I going to have them learn how to work with computers? What, where are the jobs going to be? And that's, education is just one facet of life. Health, that's the big one. And of course, we have people who have gone in a direction where they won't have their children immunized right. uh, because of, of fears. And there's a responsibility to explore those fears, not only for your own children, but the children who are being exposed to diseases that your children are carrying, if you don't immunize them. So it's planning for a family, planning for the adults, the, the parents of the adults. I'm working on a book now about aging which is actually where I started my work in personal futures. But uh, I'm writing about an example of a lady who is just starting to lose her memory, starting to lose her mind, slipping into dementia and eventually into Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And the, the terrible thing of this story is that people start coming in. They see her failing and they are anxious to get her money, her, her house, her everything, anything she owns. Right. Uh, and it's a little startling because I've talked to people about so many instances where a family member has stolen from them. Uh, right. uh, other people are trying to find ways to get their money. We get it online. Every day I have uh, mail that is trying to figure out a way to trick me into giving them money or doing something. Right, right. So that's, that's where the individual is, is taking, anticipating these problems. 
If you understand that most of the mail coming into your mailbox is gibberish, well, then you can, you can lock it out one email at a time, but you can lock it out so that it can't come back again. If you understand that your parents are at risk, then you can help them prepare before they start having mental problems of their own. Right. And, and that's probably the key. If you can get them to make decisions about what they want mm -hmm. and then see to it that those desires are fulfilled. But when I was doing my research, my very initial research, I did uh, set out questionnaires to uh, uh, several hundred people in their 60s and over. And one man on his questionnaire wrote in the comments, my nephew stole my farm. And I, I had no way of contacting the man, but if I had, I really don't know what I could have done anyway. But that started me thinking about financial abuse of elders. I've talked, mm -hmm. right. I've talked to attorneys, I've talked to doctors, I've talked to other elders. Uh, it's everywhere in this country. There are people who are trying to steal the, the money, the homes, whatever, from okay. people. So, so was it fair to say then that personal futures helps you prepare against those things happening? Yes. Okay. It's, it's, helped, it's helped me and my family and friends and is how I got into this book. It's relatives that were involved. Right, right. Because if everything is pre, uh, you know, organized or pre done, then there's, it's impossible for anybody to steal from you because everything is done when you're of sound mind. Is that accurate? That's the concept. You're always, yeah. somebody can always find a way to steal from you. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Especially from the elderly. There's, there's always, they can always forge things, but, uh, you know, again, if, if, if they have everything in place, it's much more difficult. It's, yes. If they're going to do it, it, just make it hard for them, right? If they're going to yeah. do it anyway, just make it as difficult as possible. So a lot of these decisions have to be made when you're younger and when you're of sound mind. Right. You need right. to write a will. Right. And, and be sure that both, if, if it's a husband and wife, that, that oh. the wills work with each other. Right. And that they are both happy with it. Then have it signed, notarized, and copies with the attorneys so right. that somebody can't change it. Somebody can't come in and just talk you out of it. Okay. Uh, and there, there are lots of ways that people can protect themselves, but they've got to figure out who they can actually trust, who's going to carry through for them. Right. right. So, so if you're younger, let's say you're a young couple, you're in your, people getting, are getting married a little older now, uh, late twenties, early thirties, let's say. And, uh, how would you suggest that they begin to plan planning out 10 years, planning out 25 years, 30 years. How do you suggest that they plan for the, their personal future? Well, they need to think about their own lives what they enjoy, what are their careers going to be, do they, have a, do they have a career path, do they have alternates, are they going to have children, do they want to live in a city, do they want to live in the country, uh, how are they going to educate their children, what are they going to do when they get to midlife and the children start moving out and they, they have grandchildren to deal with, how are they going to contribute to the grandchildren, if at all. Uh, when they get older than that, where are they going to live? Are they going to stay in the home that they've raised their family in, which is usually a fairly large place? Are right. they going to go into a smaller place? If they're going to move from that neighborhood, are they going to leave most of their social connections behind? And if they move to a new place, they've got to recognize that they've got to build a new social network to fit that area. You can, with computers, you can carry your friends anywhere you go. Right. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a marvelous thing. Right. But it also lets people become detached from each other. They've got that artificial space between their computer and the other computer. And 
so people are don't feel quite so close as they used to. Okay. So so they can actually use this, even younger, Nilda, um, they can yeah. use this. This is basically like personal planning. You know, they can really plan out for the future. And, and if you can hit a, a, a younger a younger audience because yeah. a, a younger generation, because I know like the millennials, for example, uh, like the twenties or, you know, 18, 19, they're still like kind of trying to figure life out. But if you can yeah. give them some kind of guideline and, and, and scenarios, they can kind of come out of, you know, school or college, you know, kind of understanding, well, you know what, if I do this, this will happen. If I do that, that'll happen. But even, even before getting to college, because, you know, you don't want them to get in the wrong field either, because there are some fields nowadays that they're still offering in college that the future's already saying that those few, those, those careers may not even exist. Right. Right. So it's good to make them aware even earlier. Yeah. Yes. Good point, Rachel. Yes. And, and planning must, you precede the planning with the exploration of the future. Mm -hmm. You look ahead and then you make a plan to get to where you want to go. I went to college thinking I'm going to be a chemist in industry. That's because I'd taken a course in chemistry and I loved it. When I got to college in the registration line, I found out how much math was going to be involved. And I'm not very good at math. I changed my major to business in, in the first day <laughs> on the campus. So you can see how much planning I had done. and so. Right. I, hoping that other people will do better than I did. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, again, uh, for, for me, I, I feel like I was a futurist since I was a child because I always researched the courses when I decided to go back to school because I went back to school later. I was in my, uh, my mid to late 20s. When I decided to go back to school, I had what I did was that I, I was in the workforce for quite some time and I figured out what I didn't like. And so that was a process of elimination. And one of the things that I recognized was that I was working the same hours as a lot of professionals around me and they were making three times what I was making. So with that said, I started planning my future and said, okay, so if that's the case and the only difference between them and myself is that they have a degree, I guess I have to go get one of those. <laughs> and, and from there, it's been, it's been quite a journey. But I also know that nowadays our kids are not, they're not thinking the same. They're very confused. They're in school. So I think personal futures is very important to them because they're very confused. They don't know what, what way to go. Their fear is that they're going to finish school and then they're still not going to have a job. And so, so there's a lot for them to think about. And I think their concerns are very valid. Their concerns are very valid because you have to understand they see our grandparents. Okay. What, you know, they, they, they've experienced a lot of our, our parents um, right. experiences. Okay. And then they see us with these jobs. And then a lot of our generation has lost jobs, you know, because right. the, the crash of the economy and all these. So they're like, okay, so what am I going to do next? Right. Because so neither example, like my mom talks about the depression and what right. she went through and they're like, right. okay, we're not going to go into that. You know, we're not going to go yeah. into that. All right. Yeah. Then we, we tell them about our experiences. So they're really fearful. Like, what do we do now? You know, right. <laughs> is there a future? <laughs> you know, that's exactly. how they think. Exactly. So in a case like that, Dr. Vern, how would you, uh, work with, uh, with, really with the millennials? I work with millennials all the time. Uh, when I okay. was at the uh, University of Mexico, I was teaching all millennials. And okay. they're smart kids, probably yeah. smarter than my generation was. Yeah. They are starting to grasp the things that I didn't understand at the time. They tend to think more about the future than I think our, my generation did. Okay. So there's evolution is working on our side. When I was at the University of Houston, I graduated in 2000. The word future 
was very seldom seen on a publication. Uh, we celebrated it when, some, when a magazine had an article about the future. Now I pick up the newspaper, any magazine I pick up will have some kind of an article with future in the title. So we've made some progress. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. That's awesome. So Dr. Vern, I would, I definitely want to continue this conversation at a later time because it's definitely interesting. Uh, you have, uh, you have a workbook, right? We're going to have all of your information. You have a workbook that you're, that you give out, right? It's free on your site. It's on my website, personalfutures.net. Okay, so we will refer them there and uh, they, can, they can download the workbook. And th there's also a book. We're going to have all of the information about the book, where to get the book at the bottom of this, uh, of this interview. So we, you definitely want to check in and look into that because when we're talking personal futures, this is really big. The future, honestly, is, is right now. The future is tomorrow morning. The future is 30 years from now. The more prepared you are, the better you're going to land on your feet. And that's, that's just the short of it. Okay. So ready for change. Ready. And you have to be malleable. You have to be ready for change because the future is going to change whether you're ready or not. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Vern, for being here with us. And again, we look forward to seeing you very soon, coming back with more information on futures uh, planning, on futures, uh, on personal futures. So we look forward to seeing you very soon. Okay. And to the audience, I'll see you guys uh, next week. Next week, we'll have another futurist and, an and more information for you. All right. Until then, goodbye. Thank you for listening to the Foresight Strategy Show. You can hear host Dr. Nilda, co-host Rachel with feature guests every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live or anytime on demand. Visit www.drnildaperez.com forward slash show. For more information, sign up to our Foresight Strategies Insider Newsletter, a $10 value for free at www.drnildaperez.com forward slash newsletter.